Welcome back to High Tech Farmer. My name is Matthias and today we're gonna get everything on our planter right here calibrated. You might be thinking I knocked my head on something because that isn't our physical planter, but this right here is our meter. And on our planter we have 24 of these meters. And what the job is of the meter is to singulate the seed evenly across the planting rows of the planter. To show you how we test the actual meter on the test stand, we got the first meter here for row number one. I'm gonna load onto the test stand. We'll get everything plugged in and hooked up and we'll run this one for a test. This right here is our Meter Max Ultra Stand from Precision Planting and it allows us to put each one of our meters right here from our planter on here to run a seed calibration. Dad's grabbing some seed there. We'll start running tests of a thousand seeds through each meter to optimize our singulation for planting. First thing we gotta do, load that meter up with a little bit of seed, then we'll kick the disc on. This way it'll start singulating the seed and we'll start the vacuum. That way it'll suck the seeds to the disc and we'll start our test here. I got the meter running, I don't know if you can see, but we got some seeds coming out of our seed tube. So now that we've ran a fair amount of seeds through, we'll come over here and we'll start our test. And here you can see, making sure each seed's going in the right spot. We like to see our singulation. It's at 99.8, 99.9 percentage. That way we know we're putting the right seed in the right spot when we move this meter off the test stand back to the planter for spring planting. The thousand seed test just finished on this meter. If we look at the report, we can see our singulation came up to 99.7. We had one skip and two multiples, which means there was one spot across our test where there was supposed to be a seed dropped and one didn't get dropped. And there was two spots where two seeds got dropped rather than one. And since I want my singulation to be above 99.8% and higher, I'm gonna take the meter off, open it up and start diagnosing what might be causing the issue in here? See if we can get it open. Now that I got the meter open, I thought I'd give you guys a quick crash course on how everything in the guts of the meter operate. So here we have our 27 cell disc that I was talking about. And by using a vacuum on the back side of the disc, that is what sucks the seed to the disc. And to make sure we don't get two or three seeds pulled up at each hole on our disc here, on the opposite side of the meter that faces the disc, we have a singulator and that knocks off any additional seeds and hopefully only leaves us with one seed that's getting dropped into the trench at that specific point. That's the basics of how the meter work. And now I'm gonna start dissecting to figure out why I'm having more than one seed drop a couple times on my test. I've given a one over to the meter, the seal, singulator, brush looks all right. But I noticed this right here, which is part of our knockout wheel. So the purpose of the knockout wheel is this makes sure there's no seed chunks or treatment chunks that get stuck in the holes of the disc and plug it up from being able to suck that seed to the disc. And I'm noticing that the arm that holds the knockout wheel to the meter is actually a little bit bent and wore down in comparison to a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that knockout wheel arm and then we'll jump it back over to the meter stand. Got the meter loaded back on the saddle. We'll fill the seed pool up. We'll give her another test. Those changes are making a big difference. We're on our last 50 seeds, and I've only had one multiple drop through so far. The test is complete, and there we're at 99.9. .9. As much as I would like the meter to simulate at 100%, 99.9% is near perfect, and this is the real world, and nothing's perfect. So I'm gonna put that meter off to the side, we'll grab another one, and keep testing. The first thing I'm noticing on this second meter is the brush right here, which keeps the seed down in the seed pool. As you can tell, it's kind of frayed and looks worn out. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out with a new one. 
Got the nice new brush installed. Now we're gonna pop the singulator out of the meter and we'll test the singulator itself. To test the singulator, and remember the job of the singulator is to singulate and make sure that only one single seed goes where one seed is supposed to go. You take it up next to the disc, you use this special tool, and if you can slide this tool, if you can tell there's a couple notches in it, if you can slide it past the first notch, that means the singulator is wore out. And as you can see here, I'm sliding it in and out. This singulator is wore out, which means I'm gonna replace this with a new singulator for this meter. Fill her up, keep her on. That meter tested 99.8% on singulation. I think I'm gonna go ahead and change out all the singulators on all the meters. I inspected a couple more. It looks like they're all starting to get down to that threshold. So I'll pop this one off and start changing out all the singulators before we run them. Three rows done and we are now on lucky row number 24. I figured I'd show you guys kind of how the technology works and how this thing actually determines if there's a seed dropping and how it can determine the simulation that the meter is putting out. So like you've seen the meter sits up here on the stand and then it actually drops the seed right here into what we call a seed tube and on this seed tube there is an infrared sensor right here that shoots a light across the seed tube. That way, whenever a seed gets dropped in this tube and it breaks that light beam across, it'll add one seed onto the counter of the test. And because I input onto the display or the Precision Planting 2020 how many cell disc I have, this being a 27 cell disc, and I input the speed at which the disc is turning, the machine or the technology knows how often in terms of seconds a seed should be dropping off of this disc and that's how it knows if there is a double or if there's a skip being read off of that sensor. All in today I replaced all of the singulators, all of the knockout wheels, some brushes and seals across our 24 meters and it cost me about $2400 or $100 per meter in parts. Although that sounds like a lot of money, Precision Planting estimates that dropping one entire percentage point in singulation, so from 99.0% to 98.0%, we can expect up to a two bushel per acre loss on corn. And that can be accredited to where we have multiple seeds placed, where there should only be one. That increases competition and we see a yield drag. And in some of the spots where no seed is dropped at all, we are spending money on fertilizer and chemical and not reaping the benefits of placing the seed where it needs to be. Since we're done running everything over at the test stand, another thing we like to do is put a nice coating of graphite on all of our seed discs. That way they run smoother across the seals. So I'm gonna shake this can up and start applying. I usually like to apply two coats of graphite on all the discs. That way it makes for a more even coat. But now, in the meantime, while that first coat settles on, heading up to the other office for a crop insurance meeting. Two hours later, crop insurance meeting is over. Things are looking a lot different on the farm compared to last year when you start going through some numbers and crop insurance wise. Prices have come down almost $2 from where we're at last year on beans and a buck 50 on corn. So gotta make those decisions by March 15th, but now taking the walk back to the shop to paint the second coating on the meters. Now that I finished with the meters, the next thing I wanna get done is I wanna build a shelf that's gonna go up in the loft to help declutter some of the mess we got going on up there. For those of you guys that have seen my shop tour video, you know that I'm all in on organization and trying to become more efficient in the shop. So last night, I picked up this nice shelf that I plan to install down here, and then get some help, we'll move it upstairs. First we got the instructions, but who needs the instructions when you got a picture on a box, am I right? So we're just gonna jump on in and see how this goes. After taking out all the pieces, looks like it might be a little more complicated than what I thought. So rather than looking at the instructions, I thought, let's just come on upstairs in the shop, look at the two shelves we have to see how they're put together. And looks like it shouldn't be too bad after seeing 
kind of how they got these two pieces bolted together here. product of the shelves that I just finished building. Now we're gonna limp it up the stairs. That way it can be put to use. Just about there. I got the shelf up here. It fit where I wanted. Now I just gotta think on how I wanna organize things up here so it's a little bit more efficient and get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need that's up here. Our farm being five generations old, we definitely have a fair share of amount of things that we don't even use anymore and should just be gone through and gotten rid of. But that's for another day. That's it for today's video. Thanks so much everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next one.